which was uh, very special, but still, uh, even if the track is a bit different, the DNA stayed the same. Uh, high speed corners, uh, very challenging track, and the track which gives uh, a very special feeling uh, to the driver, especially F1 cars, uh, through those high speed corners, you know, when you walk uh, on Thursday around the cops, and uh, you can imagine going there flat out, 300 k's, it still uh, makes a big, you know, impact, although you know you can do it. So, uh, yeah, it's very special and, uh, yeah, a lot of fans, uh, probably most of them for Luis, for George, uh, but, uh, yeah, still uh, very nice. So he was first pedaling around here when he was, does he, has he given you some tips on how to drive this circuit flat out? Not at all, no, which is, uh, that would be very kind of him, but actually he, he drove more often here than I did. So is he giving you some tips? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you haven't stopped smiling since you got on this stage. I'm loving this. No, I mean, it, to be honest, it's unbelievably surreal. Like, it's a, I feel like a rock star standing in front of, uh, you know, all the fans and all of this, and it's, uh, it's really special. I mean, I, I mean, I know everybody always says you guys are the best fans in the world, but it's, there's something different about Silverstone. When you, when you come in the morning, there's a just different atmosphere with all the fans, and you guys are so passionate, so uh, no, keep it up and hopefully I'll, uh, maybe not this year, but in years to come, try and put on a bit of a show for you. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. What about for you guys as well, how special it is on Leeds, so Frank Williams has been around, I know I saw him earlier on uh, today, but it's really special, of course, 50 years involved with sort of motorsport, Formula One as a team principal. What's that been like, being here with Sir Frank? I mean, yeah, such a character every time I see him. I didn't know what to expect the first time I see him, and before I knew him, we were talking about girls with him. I was like, okay, I wasn't expecting that in my first meeting, but um, you know, he's just a proper, proper bloke, great personality, and um, yeah, I think it's you know really special for him to be back at a track where he belongs. Robert, brilliant. Well, you never know in the in the modern life, uh, but well, let's see. Oh, we'll see. There's a good chance. Do you want to come back next year, Robert? Depends. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. See, I feel like Jeremy Paxman now. It's like Robert's the politician. He's not answering the question. I need to carry on and on and on. We want to see you back next year. That's uh, the let's thing. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope, ladies and gentlemen. That's the competitive man speaking. That's why. What has surprised you most about Formula One? Making the step up from F2 as champion and GP3 as champion the year before. What surprised, delighted you, shocked you about Formula One that you maybe weren't expecting? It's harder than it looks. It's not easy. And, um, you know, we're always trying to go as fast as we can, whenever you can. And even when I was younger and you see drivers make mistakes, you think, oh, what an idiot. Or, I mean, I'd use words that I probably can't say now, but I mean, <laughs> when you're actually in that seat trying, driving your bollocks off and you make a mistake here and there, <laughs> and you look like an idiot and you've got guys like you saying, oh, you know, George Russell span off at turn six, what's he doing? Well, I'm trying to go fast, that's what I'm trying to do, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's not easy, so, um, but no, and to be honest, like, you know, you guys, the fans, I can't believe how many fans there are, and, um, you know, it's incredible, it's a really special feeling, I, and I've never seen a Saturday Grand Prix as busy as today, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's mega. Well done, yeah. well done. Probably, like, I didn't have one. Uh, but I have huge respect of uh, many drivers. Uh, one which stand out, uh, it was actually a rally driver. You are meant to say Johnny uh, Hunter. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Tommy Mackinnon uh, and actually Car Carlos Sainz. Uh, not the Carlos Sainz uh, Jr. Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, actually, I, I promised myself that I will buy me Porsche if I win the race. And so I bought one in 2008 when I won Canada. Brilliant. But it has, uh, so it's 11 years old and it has 7,000 kilometers. And practically it's parked since 8, no. I, actually, I, it's not for sale, but it's good. I, I, I tell you a story. It was for sale in 2013. I say, well, I'm not using it. It cost me money, insurance, blah, 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 blah. I will sell it. And then um, the guy came to me and offered me 10,000 less than I, I wanted and I said, no, I'm not going to sell you, just, you know, for don't let me win. And the same guy now is offering me two and a half times more than five years ago.
No, because it's a very rare car and uh, it's the last model and has a very low mileage and uh, so the Porsche cars went massively high. So I make a good profit <laughs> to keep it to keep it steady. <laughs> right, George. Well, currently Mercedes have been very kind to me and lend me a Mercedes GTR for this weekend, which is very fancy and very nice, but. I must say, my favourite car. Yeah, you are boring. Mercedes, no, no, wait, 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 wait. But my favourite car I've ever driven was my first car, which was a 60 brake horsepower VW Polo, which I could drive flat out everywhere. I used to live in Milton Keynes and go flat out across all the roundabouts because the thing is, when you go flat out on that thing, you're only doing about 30 miles an hour, so it was uh, it was safe. So uh, that was great fun. <laughs>